Hi, good afternoon. Here we are again with our studies from Adam to us. And we're on lesson 79. And this lesson has to do with um, not really a place necessarily, not really a person necessarily, but a business, a type of business. But it is in the city of Lübeck, Germany. But anyway, I wanted to start off with a scripture from Matthew 13, 45. Jesus said, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. You see, the kingdom of heaven is way greater than any anything that we could buy or sell in this world. Yet, the Lord says that he will provide for us mightily and everything that we need. But again, we need to be good stewards of what God gives us, don't we? So today, I am going to talk about Lubeck. Lubeck, as you can see, and look on page 535 or 534, um, it's on the Baltic Sea. And it's in actually the still in the Holy Roman Empire there. But this city was known for national and international trade. Uh, Lubeck um, is on the Trav River in the Baltic Sea, and it became one of the most important trade centers. You know, the Germans, actually, from Germany. Now we get into the Franks, of course, with French. Hungarians were from Hungary, and now we have the Germans in Germany. And Lubeck in Germany is where we're going to talk about because it organized this league called the Hansa. And the Hansa was a guild. A guild is um, got together with all the merchants together so that they could protect each other and do business with each other. It started very small, but then it got humongous, huge. The Hanseatic League was with made with traders um, and sh ship owners and and you know they needed parts and to raise money for the kingdom and raise money for themselves, but they also um, charged tariffs and taxes. Tariffs and taxes were were charged uh, where then um, other countries, if they wanted to come in and sell things, the people that lived there that sold things wouldn't get ripped off. So they charged these tariffs when um, other countries would come into their country, and they still do. Uh, the maximum league members of the Hanseatic League were about 200, but there was about 70 or 80 that was the heart of the league. Lubeck was the queen of Hansa. When you think of queen of Hansa, you're thinking about business queens. <laughs> Um, this be Hansa League became um, very popular starting in 1356, and they had a diet of representatives. Now, that's not mean that you eat representatives. They called a diet the assembly then, back then in Germany. That's what was meant, assembly. So it was assembly of representatives from various towns, and they all met in Lübeck. And they considered policies and resolutions and those kind of things. You see, shipping cost quite a bit of building ships, um, and they gave contributions for shipbuilding, for um, pilots to train the pilots of the ships, and to build lighthouses. They need lighthouses because the ships would be wrecked at night, especially during storms. And they need lifts for heavy equipment and cargo and ship masts, a lot of different things that went for this league would get together. But one of the basics is, was trading, of course, but they also protected each other, um, especially when they had to travel long distances and, the, and there were bandits um, there to steal things from them. Well, the Hanseatic lead, um, the, what, they, what they dealt with then were things like spices and fruit and wheat and rye and flax and timber and honey and leather and copper and iron and amber, which was a, a tree perfume um, that they made perfume um, medicine and um, jewelry out of. Also, um, later on, they specialized in metals and wood products and woolen fabrics and linen cloth and even silk. So there's a lot of things, a lot of things they had to sell back then. The league became so large and successful that they would, we would call it today a monopoly. 
A monopoly meant they had they had the monopoly on trading. Like they don't have anyone else. If you didn't belong to that league, then you couldn't deal with all the all these other and your products would not be bought by people because they advertised and they had a monopoly back then. In fact, Lubeck Lubeck became the the richest city and the most powerful in the Baltic Sea. And they built grand buildings, and they did a lot of things with their money. And they established their business in many places, including Poland, Sweden, Belgium, Latvia, London, England, Russia. They monopolized these places. And the buyers and sellers would help each other. And the, it wasn't just the kings and the queens and the wealthy merchants that were buying back then. It was actually the common folk. They were more concerned about the common folk. Because when they sold their goods to lots and lots of people, they ended up with lots and lots of money. And a lot of the common folk wanted their goods. The middle class would become more wealthy at this time. But then again, they would have what's called trade wars. You see... Um, the, in Germany, they they couldn't really depend on the government to to give them a police force. They were so the governments were so busy in armies and fighting among each other. So basically, what they did in the Hanseatic League is they put together their own police force for military protection. And so anyone that used their league could use their military pr protection, and that was a big deal. Hanseatic League was so powerful that it was difficult uh, for you to buy and sell if you weren't a part of the League. And some of the countries did not want to be part of the League. They thought that was it was a ripoff to them and they wanted to sell their own goods. One of these, these countries was Denmark. And they actually had a war with Denmark, you know, and fought them against this Hanseatic League. And Denmark ended up joining the League. And there's called the Peace of, of Strasserd, which actually has to do with this whole military conflict. So now we're having wars and military conflicts with businesses. Well, the, dec the decline of the Hanseatic League was inevitable, considering they had so much power. And of course, the kings and queens and countries didn't really like that when a business had more power than they did. Well, it started with a little town, a little a town, a little country, one by one, just succeeding from the union of the Hanseatic League. One of the first was the Netherlands. The Netherlands had lots of things to sell. The Dutch people, they loved to buy and sell things, and they were good at making things. And so the Dutch stopped depending on them and started depending on themselves. And they defeated, actually defeated the Hanseatic League an army in war in 1438 to 1441. And there was a treaty signed, the Treaty of Copenhagen against Germany, and gave Dutch traders the rights to sell their own thing. Well, the last meeting of the Hanseatic League was in 1669. It was called the Diet of the Hanseatic League, which means assembly, remember? <laughs> So, but the city of Lubeck was fantastic. Look at your pictures there. Splendid houses. The streets were, were organized north to south and east to west. So you could get around really easy. There were small businesses all over and large, huge, huge businesses too. Uh, that, you could look at the different landmarks there that you see in your, in, in your book and see how beautiful um, Lubeck came because of what the Hanseatic money and the riches that the Hanseatic League brought in. So but when we think about this all, I think, you know, it's not all about riches, is it? Although, isn't it good sometimes to have riches? Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. But sometimes they tend to corrupt. The love of money corrupts. And that's what we're seeing in history. The kings wanted money, so they fought. The businesses wanted money, so they fought. Hmm? It's a lot about riches. And that's one of the weaknesses of mankind. But as we focus on the Lord, the Lord owns the world. He he owns the hills and he owns the cattle and, and, and millions of hills. You know, it's what it says in the Bible that God owns everything. So he's our king and our Lord. 
So we always need to look to him in whatever needs we have. And God will choose us sometimes to provide for others. He does that too. Anyway, go on with your lesson. And let's, let's contemplate on the treasures of heaven instead of the treasures of this earth.